right, next question. Should I be providing a meal for the photographer and DJ? <laughs> That's a yes from what are you serving? <laughs> uh, well, the DJ, I would say a definite yes. Um, because, you know, because of the time they've had to set up, um, they probably haven't eaten beforehand and then they've got a really late pack down. So they do definitely need a meal. Um, but photographers, um, sometimes it depends on how long you've got your photographer for. Um, so um, if I'm doing a full coverage um, and, I'm st and I've been there since, you know, lunchtime or morning with the preparation photos and I've gone all the way through to um, the reception, then yeah. For sure, I'll need something to keep me on my feet and not faint. Um, but um, but if I'm only doing, say, the first hour, if I'm leaving, that's it. Seven. Many meals don't come out till you know seven thirty eight. Then I'm I've I've told most of my couple, well, pretty much all my couples, I've said I don't need a meal because um, I'm. I, I'm not going to be there long enough for it um, and we've covered what we need but um, that said um, often your um, crew meals are not full meals either so don't expect to be having most most venues offer a crew meal option so you don't have to do the hundred dollar meal or or two hundred dollar meal for your staff um, often it's a you know often they get you know like the entree for them as their main or they've got a separate meal altogether. Oh, and the other thing is um, um, just check with your venue as well where your vendors need to have their meal if they are having a meal. Often there's a green room or a back but Is she breaking up? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Because if, <laughs> if we're in the space with the action, then, you know, when, you know, the nephew starts doing a little break dance in the middle of the dance floor, you know, before everyone starts dancing, then I'm there and I've got the camera. Uh, whereas if I'm in the back room having a quick break, it's not something I get to capture. So just a third thought. Okay, cool. Well, we'll move on. Next question is more based at Cheryl. What are the legal steps for getting married? Yeah, a lot of people don't really know how this all works. If they're watching Home and Away, uh, you don't do any paperwork, you just go down to the beach and it's all sorted <laughs> for you. But in real life, <laughs> as you know, Chelsea, um, you need to actually give the celebrant a month's notice. So you need to fill out a form at least a month before the wedding. And you also need to show your celebrant some ID, uh, proof of your date and place of birth, proof of your ID, and proof that if you've been married before, that that marriage has ended. Then another legal thing you need to do just before the wedding is sign a declaration that you are free to marry. And we usually do that at the rehearsal. And then on the day, uh, there's some legal wording. The celebrant needs to say three sentences. The couple need to say one sentence each. They don't have to remember. They can just repeat after the celebrant. And then sign three certificates and the celebrant lodges the documents with first desk marriages. So it's not too hard and the celebrant will guide you through all the legal processes. Okay, awesome. Um, and how long does a ceremony last for? Am I going to have to stand there for an hour in the hot sun in a beautiful dress sweating? If you want to, you can. <laughs> and we can have lots of poems and, you know, sand ceremonies, uh, etc. But <laughs> legally, I only have to say three sentences. You only have to say one each. We could be done in about six minutes. So generally, people that have sounds good. Yeah, no. People have about twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah. More time for photos. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I need more photos. More time for photos. <laughs> twenty minutes is a good amount of time. Okay, twenty minutes. Yeah, that seems that seems good. Um. Okay. So, what time of day would be the best for a ceremony? This is kind of okay. Uh, 
can, a few of you can answer this one. <laughs> so um, I always I always sit down with my couples before the day and we sort of nut out a timeline based on what they need and want. Um, I always figure out what time sunset is first so that we've got lots of beautiful natural light for photos. Um, and usually, you know, when the light, when the sun goes down, that's usually when people start to go, hmm, hungry. So it's kind of time to start the reception. But um, so we usually work on um, sunset. Um, and just as a really rough guide, um, that last hour of light for your bridal photographs. Um, and then half an hour before that is family photos. Um, the half an hour before that, again, is um, the ceremony starting. But that hour of bridal photos before the reception starts, that there all depends on how many um, bridesmaids you've got. If you've got more bridesmaids, more groomsmen, then uh, we need longer because they just get a little out of control and distracted. So we need a bit more time them. Um, if you want to go off site for photos, we need a little bit of extra time again. Um, so it all just depends on what you want. And, and again, you know, if you're consulting with your photographer, they'll help you figure out that timing. But as a rough guide, anywhere, depending on whether it's summer or winter or uh, the time of year, um, anywhere between 2 and 3.30, sometimes 4, depending on how intimate the ceremony is. I think also depend on the venue. Um, so <laughs> for like me, um, who's right on the waterfront, a lot of um, my brides will pick their ceremony time according to high tide, low tide. Um, so yeah, it just depends on the, the venue as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and so this is probably based at my Romana as well. When will I receive my photos back? Ooh. Um, <laughs> well, if it's me, <laughs> you get a sneaky peek the very same night. So, you know, when I leave you, um, I go home and, you know, pick out some fabulous photos and post something for you straight away. Cause you know, you're so excited and you can't wait to see the photos. Um, so straight away you get your sneak peeks, but um, you get all of your digital files on USB two to four weeks after the wedding. Um, okay. However, that is not for everybody. So a lot of, yeah, a lot of photographers um, take, they've got different timelines. Basically, you've you really got to, that's going to be one of the questions that you ask if it's important to you. Ask that question um, when you're looking at photographers to start with and then um, make sure you've got something in your contract as well. So in your booking form in your contract, it states how long they're going to take to get photographs to you and all of them because, um, like there are a few horror stories out there, but you know, most, most people, you know, three months, I think is plenty of time to get photographs back to couples and that's in peak season. Okay.